So in this video we're going to go over the basics of replacing a 150 amp battery isolator and putting in a uh, 5 or 600 amp uh, automatic relay into our road trek. So it's not really too complicated. You have your battery one terminal, alternator terminal, this is like a signal terminal, then the coach terminal here. So basically what you're going to do is these are uh, 5 sixteenths posts and the uh, new relay has got 3 eighths posts so you'll probably, what I did was I just took a pair of side cutters and snipped the uh, terminal ring and just barely spread them open a little bit so that I could get them to fit over the posts. The other option would be to use a rat tail file and open up the uh, connectors a little bit or just recrimp new connectors onto the wires. So there's a 50 amp relay here that you're going to return retain then that goes to the back of the van to the coach so you put that one on a terminal all by itself I happen to put it on the uh, B terminal now on the A terminal you're going to have three wires you're gonna have your big alternator wire your big battery wire and you have a little red wire that goes to the alternator as well that's all you need when you're done snipping things out, you're going to snip out this uh, circuit breaker, that relay. You're going to retain the ground wire on that relay. It's a black wire that goes over into here. It's just a, like I said, it's a ground wire. So that's uh, what you're going to need for just to give this relay power. It gets power from those battery terminals, but it needs a, a ground to operate. These uh, remaining wires can be left just taped off or you could run a uh, an auto switch or a manual switch or off switch if you decide to like if you were to for some reason disconnect your coach battery and you wanted to turn off power back to it you could do that or you could just do it manually with the uh, controller here the only real loose wire off of this relay is going to be a, a key power that you're going to disconnect off of one of the terminals I think it was probably terminal 54, 85 rather. Anyway, it's pretty simple. The way Road Trek had this mounted was there's there's a little aluminum tray. I don't know if we can see it or not. You see the edge of it. So this was sitting on the tray, and then there's two self tappers into the firewall basically. And then there's some components mounted on top. Like the relay was mounted on top and two circuit papers are mounted on top. So what I did was I dropped the uh, corner into that tray, reused the screw hole here, and used uh, an impact gun to put in the other screw here. So there's only two screws holding this up to the vehicle, just using uh, an impact gun. So now we'll take a look at how it works. So all you do is turn on your vehicle. And you have to wait a specified supply period of time for the battery voltage to come up. And you'll see this uh, is going to click in. And the beauty of this is there's no voltage drop across any diodes or anything. So your coach battery in the back is going to get full battery voltage. So that uh, voltage was uh, high enough for whatever length of time that was. So that tells the uh, relay to close. And then uh, after I turn the vehicle off, that's going to open when the voltage drops. So you'll have your batteries linked together. And another nice thing about that is that when you're charging your vehicle, you will, uh, depending on how you have it set up, I'll turn off the van and explain this. When you're in a configuration where you're charging your coach battery now, this will automatically close and to charge your starter battery. So that's a nice thing. So this vehicle had a modification on it. 
where it had a second charger connected to it. So it had this little battery charger here. It's like a battery tender. Was running, there's just a pair of wires running up to the uh, starter battery to keep it charged. So now I don't need that, I just have the uh, one here. So when it's plugged in, it'll charge both, depending on how, it, there's a bit of funny way the uh, transfer switches and the uh, road tracks work, but if you know how your road track works, if you're charging one battery, he'll be charging both, just to explain that. And then uh, in another video I'm doing, I'll talk about how I replaced the uh, contactor with another one of these uh, relays. So it's a pretty similar situation. So I'll, I'll shut down the video and then we'll talk about that one. All right, so it's a bit dark in here, but I've got the uh, interior load switch wired up to run off of this. I'm not sure why one's blinking and one's not. They're both open right now. And I have control over the uh, engine contactor as well. I hooked up a, a wire to it. So hopefully you can hear that click. So that's the engine contactor. So we're gonna leave that in automatic. That's the DC load on on. Now it's an auto and off. Again, I'm not sure exactly. The blinking on these, the fast and the slow are very similar but the instructions kind of get into it there. So I'm gonna go and plug in the vehicle and what you should see is that both of these are gonna turn solid. So we just have an adapter here. So that's plugged in, now we got about a few seconds anyway. So my battery charger would have come in automatically. You can see that the uh, microwave is on. So I'll give these things a little bit of time to count. And then they will both close. Here's the first one. Voltage might be lower in the front, so it might take 90 seconds for it to close in. And there you go, so it closed in the uh, front contactor. So now we are charging both sets of batteries at the same time. That is the uh, DC load center. And uh, depending, I said like before, depending on how the wood road track is wired, where the uh, charger is hooked up, you need this to close, and then this one is closed, so it's close. It's charging the uh, battery in the front. So if you wanted to run your radio all the time now, you could. Your uh, battery is going to be protected. It's not going to get run down. And then if you wanted to turn it off or whatever, like separate systems, you could do that back in auto it's going to close in eventually that's kind of funny it just happened that the uh, air conditioning uh, turned on just, uh, the reason that you can't turn it off now is because uh, like the contactor is opening and closing but the uh, load center is being run by the uh, converter slash charger so it's not the lights aren't going to go out anymore but anyway they're both on automatic so they'll close uh, eventually on their own like I said 30 seconds so I think that that's about all I can show you right now I ran uh, a num numerous uh, two conductor 14s I just have uh, a roll of wire here or two conductor 16 rather you need to have two fuses you need a fuse on either side of the contactor, one to the LED 
and then you need another fuse that provides power to these guys on the battery side. And then uh, what I did was I ran a, a little cable chase up here. Removing this panel is not easy. It's, uh, it's screwed down and nailed down and then it goes under this wall here about an inch and a half and then there's like a, a little groove cut in that to index it so it sits in the right position. So uh, I was able to take it out and make a, a nice cut. Here this is going to be hidden when I put the cover on but like I said that was not easy to do. Then I actually had to rip the edge off about uh, well that much because I couldn't get it back in because the way the uh, hot water tank comes in there's uh, some sheet metal in the way and it was really difficult to get that back in and then uh, the hole up here is kind of crude because it's not nearly as easy to uh, take it out and cut it and I decided to put the two controllers here you see they're both lit up they're both closed and automatic there's enough space to put this thing in here. A, a four-way rocker switch plate is five inches by about two and a half. You could put it in here where this uh, porch light switch goes and it would fit. Or like I said, you could take this switch, sorry, this switch out and uh, put in a, uh, a solid switch instead of a momentary switch and it would work as well. So that's uh, what I'm going to be doing in the future probably is going to retrofit this uh, with a regular switch so I can kind of operate this. But I think if you can get this far, the wiring is relatively easy to understand. Like that's the wiring for uh, the isolator that we took out, that one right there. So this wire here is a key switch and there's the ground. Then there's this little circuit breaker between the E, which uh, gets power from uh, bat the battery, which is terminal one, B1. So when you turn the key switch on, it turns on E, and it turns this original isolator contraption on. Then I don't know why the alternator is its own post, but it is. And uh, then B2 goes to your coach batteries in the back. I didn't take out any of these protections here. I left those all in place. I left that one in place and put that onto one of the uh, connections on the new isolation switch on the inside. This, this is the inside isolation switch. And then that's the load center on this side. So again, all I did was uh, snip the uh, ring terminals so I could make them kind of into a, a fork terminal, just a tiny little bit. Because it's only a sixteenth of an inch you need to open them up. You'll probably need some uh, 3 8 uh, lugs anyway for random things. You'll need two fuse holders and a couple of fuses to do this job. And uh, a roll of wire if you want to run multiple circuits up into here. My intention is to build some kind of a console in here. I don't know exactly what I want yet. I have a power meter that I'm going to be uh, installing right now, it's not reading any power. And it runs on 24 volts, so a 24 volt step up converter. And then this is my antenna amplifier. It puts out five volts DC. And uh, so I'm gonna put a 12 volt to five volt converter on there. And then I have a, a little load center here. For DC, I'm gonna. It's a 100 amp load center, so I'm gonna run larger wires up to it right now. But what I did was I just used the two wires that came up that used to go here to the other like built-in antenna amplifier. But now that I've got this other antenna, that's uh, the route I'm going. I find that this thing is, is that thing there is good enough. This is the uh, tray or trough that I'm using to run the wire up into the vehicle. These two 
shelves are firmly installed. I can't take them out. My original hope was to put the electrical console up here, but then I'd have to run all the wiring through this cabinet. And I need to make it safe because I have 120 volts going to this power or to this meter. So uh, it looks like it's all going to be down here, mounted in a box of some sort. And uh, not sure if there's anything else to show you. I chose not to run the wiring in the wall because on one side the wall is the exterior of the van. I didn't want to risk damaging the van to pull that wire through. Like I did pull in this wire for this receptacle here, but I decided I wasn't worth taking a risk. I'd be better off making a trough and then I can run all the kinds of wires that I want up here without any trouble. I used to have this trimetric, what the heck is it, 2020 power meter, but uh, the DC shunt got damaged on it. And when I started looking at the price of a DC shunt, I just decided to buy a uh, Victron system instead. So I'm going to be doing a video on this eventually, as well as that other power meter. So it's a BMV 712 Smart. So this can go uh, Bluetooth, I believe, or you could put it into a PLC and put it on a network. And then this is uh, Modbus and Ethernet. So eventually I'm gonna have like a little Ethernet switch in here and all kinds of different gadgets. So it's gonna be kind of interesting, for me anyway. And then the TV runs on 12 volts. We'll take a look at what TV that is in a minute. So I don't need to have my inverter running to run the TV, but that's the intent is to hook up the antenna to five volts DC. So I don't need to run it, the inverter for it to work. So this is the TV here. It's just an insignia TV. It's got a DVD player in it. And you can get DVDs for a couple of dollars in the pawn shop if you're traveling and you want to watch a movie. So I, that's kind of good enough for me. And uh, I think that that's all I've got to show for this video. I did another video on those contactors and how they work. I kind of set up a power supply to show how they work. So I think that is about it. So uh, thank you for watching.